The tech job market is finally starting to bounce back, but if you're expecting it to look like 2021, you're in for a rude awakening. Why are companies posting 7 million tech jobs while simultaneously making hiring harder than ever? Here's what's really happening. Tech hiring is up 40% year over year, but the average interview score required to get an offer has jumped 12%. We're not going back to the days of multiple offers and bidding wars. This is a completely different game with new rules. The developer who understands these changes will thrive. The ones who don't, they'll keep wondering why their resume is and getting responses. Today, I'm going to break down exactly what this new market looks like and how you can position yourself to win in this market. Let's go after this today. Welcome to Startup Hack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding bootcamp, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, today we're diving into the reality of 2025 tech jobs and what the market looks like. After two years of layoffs and uncertainty, hiring is finally starting to pick up, but this isn't your 2020 gold rush comeback story. This is something entirely different, and understanding it will make or break your tech career. So tech hiring is up 40% year over year, but companies are being incredibly picky about who they're hiring. The average technical interview score required to get an offer at a major company rose 12% in 2024. They're raising the bar. Over 7 million tech jobs postings have recorded with a 33% month over month increase, but most are for super specialized roles. Part of the reason you can't find them is because if you're just looking for software engineer or some of the basic ones, you're not going to find these. You got to dig into AI engineering and some of these other types of specialized role. The old spray and pray approach to job applications is completely dead. You need laser focused targeting now. Companies learn during the layoffs that they can be more selective and they're not going back to desperate hiring. This isn't the gold rush of 2020, 2021 when anybody with basic coding skills could get multiple offers. Now, 26% of tech job postings now require AI expertise. That's a 98% year over year surge that shows no sign of slowing down. 87% of hiring leaders list AI experience as valuable, making it more important than traditional programming skills. Companies are boosting pay by 44% for workers with AI and machine learning skills. The premium is real. When I started some of my businesses in the past and focused on core technologies, but today's equivalent would be AI integration from day one. Now, a lot of different language skills are important, but AI skills are super critical. It's specifically because AI and data science applications are really looked at and sought after in every uh, corporation. The developers who combine traditional programming with AI capabilities are becoming unstoppable in this market. Now, 95% of tech leaders face challenges finding these skilled workers, creating a massive opportunity for the right candidates. Organizations are deprioritizing experience requirements because they can't find people with the right skills. The the half-life of technology skills is now just 2.5 years. Continuous learning isn't optional anymore. 85 million tech-related jobs could go unfilled by 2030 if we don't address the skill shortage. Companies are investing more in upskilling existing employees rather than hiring new talent. The gap between junior developer and senior developer has never been wider in terms of both skill and compensation. Now, only 18% of new tech jobs will be fully remote, while nearly half of the workers say that they'll, they'd quit if forced back into the office. So there's a dispar- uh, a gap here, right? 43% of companies now mandate structured office schedules, more than double the 20% from early 2023. Amazon and Dell require five days in the office for 2025, signaling the end of remote work experiment. Smaller companies under 500 employees offer 70% more workplace flexibility compared to just 14% of large enterprises. So know that when you're looking to, if you're going to demand a work from home, you're definitely going to need to look for your smaller companies. The companies that survive will be those that find the sweet spot between productivity and employee satisfaction. Because without a doubt, empl- companies feel like productivity has to be in the office, whereas employees prefer to be working from home. The hybrid model is creating new challenges for team collaboration that didn't exist in fully remote or fully in office. Now, if your company has help, needs help implementing uh, software development in, and connecting your systems, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we'd love to help you out. Now, nearly one in three tech professionals is actively job hunting right now and 60% plan to change employers within the next year. The wave of layoffs in 2024 destroyed employee morale, leaving workers over, overworked, burned out, and ready to jump ship. 
37% of those laid off in 2022 uh, still haven't found new employment in tech. Uh, and this is a historic high that creates lasting trauma. Companies that treated employees poorly during layoffs are now struggling to retain their remaining talent. The psychological impact of watching colleagues get fired is driving volu- voluntary turnover rates through the roof. Smart companies are realizing that retaining talent is more cost effective than constantly hiring and training new people. But right now, it's kind of a buyer's market for companies right now. They know that they can go out and shop and find somebody with better skills at a lower price. So for the first time in 11 years, non-tech industries are hiring more than tech talent, uh, hiring more tech talent than traditional tech companies. So let me restate that. For the first time in 11 years, non-tech industries are hiring more tech talent than traditional tech companies. So a services company, some other company like Walmart or whatever is actually doing more tech hiring. And this is what I've been predicting for the last few months is we're going to see more tech hiring as people want to integrate AI because they need developers to do that. Professional and business services have added 50,000 tech jobs while traditional tech companies only added 29,000. Every, every industry is becoming a tech company from healthcare to retail to manufacturing. The financial sector, transportation and warehousing are aggressively competing for tech talent with better work-life balance. Traditional tech companies are losing their competitive advantage in attracting talent. The diversification actually creates more stable career path because you're not tied to the boom bust cycle of tech. Now, companies have dramatically scaled back university hiring programs, creating a missing generation of engineers. Entry level positions are the hardest hit right now because AI can is the perception is that AI can handle a lot of the basic programming tasks, but they still won't replace even a junior level programmer. New graduates from top schools like uh, other places, like a lot of new top schools are maintaining spreadsheets with hundreds of rejected applications. The barrier to entry for junior roles has skyrocketed while senior positions remain plentiful. Companies would rather hire one senior developer with AI tools than three junior developers. This creates a dangerous gap that will impact the industry for years when these junior developers should have been gaining experience. Now, the market rewards deep expertise in specific areas rather than broad generalist knowledge. Data scientists, machine learning engineers, and AI architects are commanding premium salaries and multiple offers. Cybersecurity professionals are in such high demand that companies are willing to train people from other fields. Cloud computing specialists, especially those with AWS experience, uh, saw the largest growth in demand. The days of being a full stack developer alone are ending. You need to pick a specialty and go deep into it. Specialized skills in areas with green technology and fintech are creating entirely new career paths. That's why here at Startup Pack, we have a great program. So if you're in Idaho or Utah right now, reach out to us at startuphack.com slash jobs because we have an opportunity to train you on the job and we will pay you a training wage while you are training and this is a year-long internship program we believe investing in the future of software developers and we're going to train you and put you on real software development jobs so you can get that experience now Lavish perks and signing bonuses are disappearing as companies focus on sustainable compensation. And I'm actually a fan of this. I think that during the 2021 through 2023 era, developers became too spoiled and it was crazy. I know I was trying to hire during that time and I could not find, uh, we had eight open positions on a team of 50 developers at one point because we could not find enough good software developers. But flexibility and meaningful work are becoming more valuable than free meals and ping pong tables. Stock, Stock options are less attractive when tech companies are focused on profitability rather than growth at any cost. Companies are adding benefits like uh, fertility support and commuting, uh, uh, commuting assistance instead of expensive campus perks. The most successful developers are negotiating for learning opportunities and career advancement rather than just salary. Total compensation packages are becoming more transparent, which is actually benefiting skilled developers. Now, tech under, underemployment rates are vary dramatically by reason, region, while some areas still struggle while others are booming. Certain states and met- metropolitan areas are emerging as new tech hubs outside of Silicon Valley. The shift to hybrid work is allowing talent to spread out geographically while still accessing top opportunities. Cost of living arbitrage is becoming a major factor in career decisions as remote work options expand. International talent is increasingly competitive as visa restrictions and remote work policies evolve. The concentration of tech talent is expensive 
uh, in expensive coastal cities is finally breaking down. Now, technical interviews now focus more on AI integration and problem solving than algorithmic puzzles. Soft skills like communication and adaptability are becoming as important as technical abilities. Companies are using AI tools to screen candidates, creating new challenges for job seekers. Portfolio projects are demonstrate uh, to demonstrate real-world problem solving are more valuable than academic credentials. The interview process has become longer and more rigorous, with multiple rounds becoming standard. It's actually harder, easier. It actually takes less time right now to buy a house in some cases than to get hired from a job. Cultural fit and, fit and ability to work in hybrid environments are major evaluation criteria. So the most successful developers are those who can quickly adapt to new technologies and frameworks. Continuous learning isn't just recommended. It's essential for career survival in this new market. The companies that invest in employee development are attracting and retaining the best talent. Cross-functional skills that bridge technology and business domains are becoming increasingly valuable. After a long time in this industry, I've never seen such a premium place on the ability to learn quickly and adapt. The developers who embrace this new reality and position themselves as lifelong learners will thrive in ways that aren't possible today. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion. So hit me up in the comments down below because I answer all of them personally. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers and to build custom software solutions. We offer some great services to help your company work like a well-oiled machine. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.